So, good evening. Welcome to all of you who have joined us in person and on Facebook Live and Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, please take this moment to ensure that your cell phones are silenced. They can be tricky. <laughs> we begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. Uh, so I invite you to get still and close your eyes. As we play God is the love that I am chant, you may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, simply bring it back to this mantra, God's the love that I am. <laughs>
And as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies. And as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us virtually or in person. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. Let us join in prayer. So as I quiet my mind and enter my center, where all my intentions are set in motion, I recognize the power and presence of God, of which I am a part. I call upon it to expand into the daily lives of each of us here, each of us online bringing our awareness to the sacred tasks given us. I speak my word for this beautiful ministry that we allow our connection with the one to clearly express on behalf of each other, bringing peace and faith and trust to all. I call on it to remind us of its beauty and love without exception. I call on it to remind us that we are together on this path of evolution toward the conviction that we are all perfectly whole in every area. I am so grateful that we are each part of a connection that cannot be broken in gratitude for all truths revealed and for the inspired words of truth we hear from Reverend Sidney I release and let go into the law of mind with confidence that God's will is done as I believe it. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. And now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
If there was only one prayer ever spoken, and only one prayer ever heard, only one heart ever broken, it would be enough to speak these words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. If there is only one life that we're living, only one breath and one voice, only one hurt we're forgiving, that would be enough to make this choice. Wow. You know, Meister Eckhart said, if the only prayer you ever uttered was thank you, it would be enough. It would be enough. And that song is just absolutely perfect. Because tonight we're going to be looking at this idea of gratitude and speaking your word for gratitude and abundance. That was just beautiful. It was just really beautiful. So... Ernest Holmes used to start all of his talks by saying, there is a power for good in the universe and you can use it. There is a power for good in the universe and you can use it. Now, Ernest, Ernie, you know, we should 
let's just be familiar with him. You know, he founded the teaching, and we refer to him all the time. So Ernie, actually, he was the youngest, I think, of eight children, nine children, and he had planned, he was born in Maine, and he had planned to become a, um, a spokes, like a spokesperson, like an announcer, a presenter, it was called then. Um, you know, because radio was big and TV was not yet a thing when he was born. And so he had this wonderful, beautiful New England voice and he was perfect for the radio and, and he would just say this stuff and it was mellifluous and so easy to hear. And it was a beautiful idea that there's a power for good in the universe and you can use it. But here's the thing, and he used to always follow this up, and many of us follow it too, is are you letting it use you? Are you letting this power for good use you? Because it's one thing to know that we can embrace and cultivate and, and call in, as Pat was saying in her beautiful beautiful opening treatment that we call in this, this power and the presence so that it might expand by means of us and express by means of us. It's, it's that, but in, if we are recognizing it but not allowing it to flow through us and lift us up, raise us to a greater awareness, teach us how to be the truth that we are, how to live that truth, that divinity that we already are. If we're not allowing that, then we're only really getting one side of that spiritual coin. Does that make sense? We want to be able to let it use us. You know, and I think it's in, easy to understand how this idea of a power for good, there's a power for good in the universe and you can use it, how it, how it might be like a very powerful, unique, inspirational power and we can see how it absolutely has shown up in, in great artists and musicians and composers and, and singers and writers. Um, you know, we think that it must be unique to them. I know that when I read someone like Maya Angelou, I just think, wow, what an incredible gift and what, an, what a blessing that she opened herself to. And, and when I think of listening to Mozart, I feel the same way. Or if I see a painting by Monet or Degas, I think they are so blessed with this talent, they let it use them. I think that they were supremely blessed and that they really, really knew that they had something going on, that those Christ lights within them were, were definitely on and they were blazing bright. Now, they called it something else, I'm sure. But the fact that they knew that this was there and it was the truth of who they were, to me shows a real awareness of connection and blessing. Now the idea of blessing something or someone is really interesting. You know, you don't need to be a priest to do this. You don't need to be a minister. You don't need to have anything more than you already have. Because it's this mystical idea is that whenever you or I bless something, we are calling forth the divine nature. We are calling it forth so that it will show up, so that we will recognize it. We are calling forth our own divine nature. Now, this power is really, really something because in almost, no, not in almost, in any situation, we have the ability, if we remember, to call forth the truth, to call forth a higher idea, to call forth the divine simply by blessing. It's a, it's a namaste idea. You know, the light in me recognizes the light in you. Whoa, right there. Picture for a moment when, when you strike a match and that light flares up for a second and then there it is. Or when you light a candle from that match, there's a moment where it gets brighter and then it goes into the flame. That's what happens when we're a blessing. We are calling forth that light. We are recognizing that that person, that idea, that experience has light and that we are part of that same light. So Ernest Holmes was not just talking to people who are recognized as geniuses or unique masters. He's talking to all of us. When he said there is a power for good and you can use it, and then he asked, is it using you? He was talking about creating a practice of receptivity to the guidance, the light that is in all of us. 
And throughout this month, we have talk, been talking about speaking your word for certain ideas. We spoke our word for health and wholeness a few weeks ago. We also then spoke about inner and outer peace. And this week, we're speaking, we're, we're talking about the idea of speaking your word for gratitude and abundance. And you might wonder why I'm putting both together, but I think it's going to make some sense in a bit. The words... When the words we speak and live in, we live in our words, we live in the, the meaning behind them, the, the history behind them, all of that, when, when they have energy, feeling, intention, and enthusiasm, we can feel the movement of life in our bodies. We can feel that, and people around you can feel it too. Have you noticed that when you're with someone who is just sort of tapping on a couple of cylinders, you sort of want to get away because it's not, it doesn't offer much life. It doesn't light you up, but when you're with someone who is fully, fully awake, tapping on all eight cylinders, and they are moving in this awareness of life's possibility, enthusiasm, and energy, wow, it's powerful, you know, because this, this, we live in this energy field, and as we connect with it, it connects back with us, and it's this divine dance that we get to do. Energy and belief... Energy combined with belief, let's put it the other way, belief combined with energy, create a broader experience of this energy field. And it has uplift, it has hope, it has vibrancy, right? It, it's, it vibrates, it really vibrates. So it's the same way with what Ernest Holmes called this thing called life. Life responds to us at the level of our commitment to it and the level that we commit to our desires and our dreams. Now, unfortunately, and this is interesting, we sometimes have a very strong commitment to our struggle. We have a strong commitment to our suffering, to whining, moaning, and complaining about other people or our limitations. We, we are really committed to this. And we, it's, it's like we create a, a box around ourselves that we are not going to get out of it because, darn it, I want to be right. I have this issue. I have this limit. And don't you dare try to prove me wrong and tell me there's something bigger and greater and more, more than this finite experience. I have to be right. But, you know, the thing is the universe only has one answer. The universe always says yes. So whatever we give it, it will Say, yes, so I am going to struggle and whine and moan and bitch and complain about this thing. The universe goes, okay, ta-da. I'm going to, wow, declare that this is such a wonderful experience. I'm going to bless this person even though we don't get along or I don't like them and call forth the light. I'm going to remember that I have this, this presence within me and they have that presence within us and it's greater than both of us. The universe says, yes. Ta-da! And that's what we are looking at. But the same thing is that when we are just presenting this ickiness and this pain or whatever, and real suffering, because people have real suffering going on, how do we move from those places of pain, the challenges or the ickiness in our lives, to a place where we can actually feel a sense of gratitude, a mindset of saying, yeah, okay, I recognize that there is a power for good in the universe and I'm willing to use it or I'm willing to have it use me. How do we move from the limitation, that finite box, into the openness, the willingness to say, okay, okay, okay. How do we do that? You know, we wanna be able to shift from speaking words about our troubles to speaking words about our infinite and wondrous divine nature. So this week, of course, you can't deny it, it's all, it's all Thanksgiving all the time, right? It's all about gratitude. And while I have complete faith that any one of us in this room or on Zoom or on Facebook could easily sit at a Thanksgiving table tomorrow and do that bit where we go around the table and say, I'm grateful for this, I'm happy for that, and it becomes, you know, this, and, it, and you get caught up in it. And I, and I know that we could all do this. But wouldn't it be good and wouldn't it be nice to feel it and own it in such a way that those feelings of gratitude and thanksgiving live beyond the turkey, the potatoes, 
and the pie, oh, the pie. We are having pie after, no, after our service tonight. Just remember, it's our pie social for Thanksgiving. If you're at home, you're going to have to go get your own pie. So, and I'll tell you, when my son was a youngster, he loved Garfield. He loved Garfield the cat. So we'd go around and do that, what I'm grateful for, and he would usually have one or two words. He would say, Garfield and or lasagna, because you know Garfield loved lasagna. I can be pretty grateful about lasagna, I gotta say, but it's hard to be grateful about the stuff that seems like it's not working, or about those people who are always getting your way or seem to be ruining your life, right? Sitting at that table and putting on that smile and saying, I'm really grateful about this, when you're not, when you don't feel it, is disingenuous. It's hard, to, it's hard to just even be in that space, isn't it? It doesn't feel good. You want to feel real. And yet there's that snippy little phrase in the Bible that says, for all things be grateful. Only, guess what? That's not what it says. It says, in all things be grateful. In all things. Good, that's a reprieve, right? So you don't have to be grateful. Because being grateful for your ex who messed around or your, your finances that aren't working or your health that isn't working, whatever it, to say, yeah, I'm really happy about this. Are you kidding me? That's, it's, it's, okay, we like to say the word belief system around here. That's BS. And none of us, we don't want to see you live in authentic lives. In fact, it's when we begin to live in that authenticity of the divine that we are, of recognizing that light, that we do resonate to the energy. And that yes, that is the universe, begins to embrace, embrace us. And we do a dance of yes with yes with yes with yes. We become that yes. And it's so wonderful. In all things, be grateful except that might be just a little bit better. You know, you might be able to say, okay, well, I'm not grateful for this, but I'm grateful for this. Maybe I can just kind of get this feeling over here and wrap it around that and it'll be a little bit better. Well, that, that's one way of doing it. You know, like I'm, I'm really grateful that, uh, that I'm with this community. Oh my gosh, I am so happy to be here and I'm really grateful that, oh my gosh, I get to hear you sing, ah, and Sam play and it's just so awesome. I'm gonna, and, and I'm wearing new shoes that I'm tripping over. I'm so grateful that, so there might be those times that are, there are other things that I'm not grateful about and I, and I want to like wrap that around and say, okay, well this doesn't work, but these over here. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. You know, gratitude is like a superpower, we're told, for happiness and prosperity and health and better relationships and the best parking places, all of that stuff. But when you are well anchored in your whiny Clark Kent place, it's hard to access any superpower of any kind. So we might try the fake it till you make it thing. You know, sometimes that'll work. That's okay. Except that we want it to go past that point of just the moment of faking it. We want, we want a tool that will last longer, that something will be an ongoing power for us, an ongoing skill, an ongoing tool that we can access anytime. So I want a tool that will go deeper and get there faster. Let's call it a spiritual workaround. It's like a spiritual workaround. You know what a workaround is, right? It's a way of getting to the same result only by a different path. Like for example, um, years ago when I worked for Yamaha Pianos, when we brought out some brand new technology, new equipment, if we had to bring it and, and present it at a big, huge rollout and it was not yet fully ready, we were working with the betas, which means they weren't fully ready, and certain things, that the features that we wanted to demonstrate, we'd have to have a workaround for. And that workaround would absolutely get us there to access this wonderful technology like the piano that plays by itself while you're in the other room, or just different things like that. We would absolutely get there, but we had to come up with these things, the issues and problems, so that we could work around and then fix them and solve them and then have you know, the, the actual product. So a workaround is a really good idea. Sometimes when I'm driving home in traffic, and I get a lot of traffic, because I live in canyon country, so I need a workaround, and sometimes that looks like taking another, another way. Sometimes it looks like going to Trader Joe's and getting a few things so the traffic light lessens, or just staying here a little bit longer, just to make it easier. That can be a workaround. When, I was, when we were raising our son, his 
there, there would be those times when we needed to discipline him and just could not get him to stop slamming doors. So our workaround was we took the door off his bedroom. <laughs> it stopped the slamming. It's a workaround. It really, really worked. We did it three times and it really, really worked. What does that tell you? But we, we uh, you know, because 11-year-olds like to slam stuff. It's just normal. But we have all of these workarounds in our lives. So we need a spiritual workaround. It's a spiritual shortcut. And, and that workaround or shortcut is blessing. It's blessing. It's that ability to bless something. So as I said earlier, when you or I bless something, we are literally calling forth its divine nature so it will be revealed, expand, as Pat said, will lift that person or that thing up to expressing as and in the highest spiritual truth possible. So here's the spoiler alert. Blessing something or someone lifts us up so that we are perceiving from our God nature. It's not about the other person. Except that since we live in this thing called the one mind, it absolutely does bless and lift them up as well. But it starts with us. We have to say yes to that power of blessing, to that recognition of the light. I have found that this knowing about this practice of blessing is, is a really great way to return to sanity when I would rather rage about something. I could rage and whine, but if I can remember to bless, oh my gosh, life is so much better. And from there, I'm actually able to move into a place of gratitude. I'm actually able to do that. You know, I've used it a lot, sometimes constantly, when I've regarded our elected leaders and they don't do what I think they should or behave the way I want them to. Those times when I couldn't truly be grateful for someone, I could and I still can bless them. It's in that practice that I feel and I know that this power for good is in this universe and it is using me, right? It's using me. So I'm pretty sure that my sometimes anthropomorphic God would rather we all bless each other than say snarky thank you. I really think, oh, nobody laughed at that? I really worked on my snarky thank you. Come on. We don't need the fake thank yous, but we need the real authentic blessings. Blessing someone you are challenged by or has hurt you or someone that you are even afraid of calls forth their divine nature, not just yours, right? And it connects with the light that is your light to shine for a moment of spiritual truth and oneness. Blessing an illness or a diagnosis calls forth the highest truth underlying all of life's experiences, that high truth that God is all there is. Blessing it doesn't mean that we are saying this is a wonderful, awesome experience and I'd like more of this mud or this icky. It doesn't mean that. We are not doing hollow praise. We are actually using a powerful and, like I said, a mystical tool that goes back generations, generations, generations. It is about connecting with each other from the highest knowing, the most loving knowing, the most aware knowing. And it's a workaround. Man, it gets you there fast. It's a shortcut to moving into a greater knowing, a greater feeling of love. Blessing the traffic when I have a long period of time ahead of me before I get home, you know, so I can binge watch Boston Legal, it means that I can listen. Finally, here I go, if I bless that traffic, I remember that I finally get to listen to my audible release of the latest book in the Outlander series, and I've been waiting for a long time. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And that means I'm absolutely using and being used by a power for good. Blessing your families tomorrow when they are working your last nerve, as Dr. Mark would say, is a wonderful way to not end up with mashed potatoes all over everyone. Food fights don't, unless they're planned and it's okay and agreed upon, but I gotta say, don't do that. You're wasting food, and we don't waste food. Blessing your finances, or what is showing up as a lack of finances, calls forth the healing power. 
and the presence of the infinite source of literally all life and all creation. We are calling forth the truth. We're calling forth truth. And sometimes when we are in the midst of great pain and great struggle, it's hard to remember to call forth the truth. I call forth the truth, but we can remember to say, I bless this, I bless this, I bless this, I bless this. It's easy to do. When we bless our money, our jobs, and the channels through which the infinite source of all life flows to us and through us, it's as if we really open up the floodgates of infinite supply. We're greasing the skids. We're greasing the skids for those vast blessings of this infinite universe to surround and fill us. Do you know what that means, to grease the skids? I found out when I used this at a talk a few years ago, that idea, that greasing the skids is something that is done, was done, I don't know if they still do it, when logging loggers would need to be able to get those logs down to that barge on the river and float them down river to where they needed to go to get on the train in order to get them to go down that ramp which they called a skid they would grease that skid so it would go easier and everything would go and it wouldn't and friction there's no friction that would cause a fire or any sort of damage like that it would actually go there faster it would go there faster and easier and just without effort that's what blessing does we get there faster without so much oh i must forgive them effort because if you are that you're not going to feel very inclined to forgive are you but if we can bless it actually begins to open us up it opens our hearts, it breaks them open, and that little bit of light begins to come through, that little bit of light that we need, that will bless, that will uplift, that will remind us, maybe for the first time, that we are part of something greater, that there is a power for good in the universe and we can use it. So this week, when you're not feeling the miracle of gratitude and thanksgiving, I want to invite you to move into just a, a greater and easier realm. Bless that which is before you. Just bless that which is before you. In fact, before you step out the door, bless whatever might be before you. Bless the people, the food, the money, the weather, the traffic, all of it. Just bless all of it. Call forth the divine energy in every area of your life. Watch how challenges become greater blessings and they become opportunities, willing, authentic opportunities for gratitude. So right now, I'm going to offer any of you who want to share an opportunity to tell us about the things that you might be grateful for as if we were sitting around that table or that you are blessing in order to shift your own experience of life to one that is magnificent and full. And in fact, um, those of you who are on Facebook Live or on Zoom, we're going to unlock the chat so that you can share with each other those things that you are grateful for so that you're not just sitting in your own bubble at home and thinking, well, this and this and this. We would like this exchange to be a more global one. Um, so enter your blessings into the chat and we might even share some of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to grab my mask and put that on. And I'm going to get our sanitizing wipes. And I'm going to bring the microphone around. So this way, you can take your mask off and share and then put it back on so we know what your blessings are. Okay, I, I neglected to put any ringers in the room for those of you who are shy. So I'm going to go right to someone that I know is going to have um, something that'll get everybody going, and that's Luana. <laughs> so I'm, I'm grateful for this place that we call home, our church, and everyone who is here sharing this gift of love of spirit and of course I, i'm biased i'm grateful for our practitioner class yeah. and for you thank you and my family of course thank you awesome thank you very much see now that wasn't hard at all who else would like to share something who's got something that they are feeling well i know that reverend mark is going to have something i'm just going to put you all on the spot here you go you can take your mask off 
and grateful to be taking over the service right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go see ya. I've got, I have TV to watch. <laughs> uh, just so grateful for this community to still be here and uh, be in an active retirement. <laughs> And my beautiful, beautiful home and husband and Chloe, our little bird, oh. and all our friends and the spaciousness in my life right oh now. Oh, my gosh. Spaciousness. Very awesome. grateful for that. Thank you. Yay. All right. Anybody else? Oh, Lauren. There you go. You, you don't have to stand if you don't want to. Well, I'm grateful that I heal very quickly. Yes. And I'm grateful, thank you, I'm grateful for my family, my husband, all of you, and that we can actually come here now and mm. see you all in purpose. And, and person. For my brain, person. Yeah, I, I love word salad, <laughs> I do it too. I'm grateful for your beautiful necklace. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Who else would like to share something? You, someone's, yeah, no, no. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Thank you for being bold. Um, I'm very grateful to, uh, for my family, for Karen, and uh, we're the Brady Bunch family because we have six kids between us. Oh, so wow, that's awesome. I'm grateful for all of them, and it's uh, wonderful to be here with you all tonight. Thank so you. I'm grateful that, for that too. Thank you so much. Wow, I appreciate it. That's beautiful. Anybody else? Oh, good. Go ahead. Talk to us. I'm grateful for my grandson, Dean, and everything I'm able to learn from him, and I love mm. him, and I thank you. Wow. Thank you. I am grateful for this community. I am grateful for the fact that I get to be here. I come in early, and I leave late. I love this place so much and I love what I get to do. And I never knew that something like this, although I always intended to have these feelings, but here I am in this incredible place and I'm very grateful. Mark. Here we go. Thank you. I'm representing the Facebook Live community. Yay. They are, they are commenting that they are grateful for the whole NHCRS family. They're grateful for NHCRS, Reverend Mark, Dr. Mark, uh, Reverend Sidney, and all of life's awesomeness, and they're grateful for the teaching. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, and Colleen, do you have anything from Zoom? Um, Gail, Pol uh, Gail Pol Polat said, I'm grateful for vaccines. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kira James said she's very grateful for Zoom Church and the Zoom patio. Wow, thank you. All right. Well. I think we're going to move back up here because I want to make sure that we, you know, get pie in a timely way. I'm grateful for pie. All right. So <sighs> thank you all for sharing. It, it, being courageous is not always fun or easy, but it's always worth the results, right? And so you got to share, and your sharing might have inspired someone else to realize that there's an area of their life that... Ah, it's calling for a blessing. And what I want to do before I go into our closing prayer, and we, well, not closing prayer, but the prayer that I do. Thank you. She's telling me, I'm, I'm watching Doreen back there. This is what I get. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's the mask. Okay. All right. Before... Usually at the end of a talk, I'll do a, a prayer, and I'll do that in a minute. But I want to read something to you from the textbook. And it really has always inspired me. So Ernest wrote, I shall keep the promise that I have made to myself. I shall never again tell myself that I am poor, sick, weak, nor unhappy. I shall not lie to myself anymore, but shall daily speak the truth to my inner soul telling it that it is wonderful and marvelous, that it is one with the great cause of all life, truth, power, and action. I shall whisper these things into my soul until it breaks forth into songs of joy 
with the realization of its limitless possibilities. I shall assure my soul. Let us pray. So we turn within. Resting in that place where we assure our soul, where we know that this power for good is the truth of who and what we are. It surrounds and fills us. It defines us and it divines us. I know that the truth of, of, of this universe is order, is harmony, is love, is joy. It is the truth that God is. It is the truth that we are and that there is no escaping that because we are immersed in God. We are saturated with God. We live and move and have our being in that and it, and it lives and moves and has its being in us. What a dance. What a divine dance that we do together. How wondrous how wonderful. And knowing that we are dancing together in this and as, as God in form. I speak my word for anyone now who might be experiencing any sort of, any sort of drama around the idea of relationship. That the truth is that the divine order of God is always lifting all of us into wholeness, all of us into a place of being able to celebrate more love, to celebrate more joy, and to know that we are one with each other. And for anyone or anyone who might be looking at an experience of financial limitation, I know that the truth, and I speak it now, I speak it here, and I declare it, and I know that the infinite source of God is now showing up for any and all as money, as income, as infinite source support, that all that is needed has already been supplied and our role is to simply say, yes, I know this is so and I am willing, I'm willing to take a chance and believe it and allow it to flow through me as me and to know that joy is a part of that. And if there appears to be an experience of physical challenges, I know that God is there. I know that God is fully present, active, and expressing as wholeness. God is always expressing as wholeness, and we recognize that, and we say, yes, we are willing to know. I am willing to know that God is whole in me, by means of me, and as me. And I know that that wholeness extends to every area of our lives. It extends to the peace on this planet because we are here as God and there can be no separation in that which is centered everywhere and has no circumference. It is the truth. God is all there is. I am so grateful. I am so grateful to know this. I am so grateful to celebrate this and to share this and that we get to dance this dance together and to bless all of it. And I know that this is the truth of life. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say that together. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And I know that we all go forth into this world with a sense of new life of new understanding, of new possibility, of new joy. For we are here to live life abundantly and fully and ta-da, to experience the full glory of all of that light. So I release this word into law, knowing it is already so. And so it is, together we say, amen.
Okay, so now is the time in our service when we gather together in the collective awareness of grateful giving. So I invite you to take your offering, if you're, whether you're at home or in this room, or the symbol of that offering, your love, and to hold it in your hand, to take your hand, to hold it to your heart, and to say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and to bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Ooh, thank you, God. So what size are you? That would fit me, right? Yeah. Okay, well, sure. we'll talk. We'll talk. Our sisters. <laughs> sisters. <laughs> All right, I want to invite Pat Wilson back up here. She's going to give us a few wonderful and important pieces of information, some announcements. So if you're on Zoom or Facebook, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. We need you to stay around. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure some of you have heard some of this before, so don't go to sleep because there's a couple of new things in here. So listen up. I'll try to tell you just before they happen. Okay, ways you can make donations. Call the office, 818-762-7566. Go to nhcrs.org slash give. Text the word GIVE to 818-457-3419. Or, best, shop Amazon Smile and select Church of Religious Science North Hollywood as a charity of your choice. It'll cost you nothing. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person or on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney. It, on December the 1st, uh, it, there is meditation at 6.50 and the service is at 7. Next week, she's having a special remembrance service. Together, we will honor those people whom we have lost. Please bring your pictures and mementos to display on our special remembrance altar. That was a new one. Youth Church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service. We welcome youth of all ages. The 2022 Journey of the Heart campaign pledge forms are available in the foyer and online. This is something new. Grief support group on Zoom. This group, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, will meet this Sunday on Zoom at 1 o'clock. Christmas Giving Tree Event. Help make a child's Christmas a joyful one. 
Once again, we have adopted the children at North Valley Caring Services. Practitioner Gail Pilat is on the patio and on Zoom on Sundays to distribute names and gift ideas or find her contact information on our website. Deliver all gifts unwrapped to the church with an appropriate sized gift bag by this Sunday, November the 8th, 28th. Gift distribution will be on December 9th. Okay, this is really new. There has been a date change. Our youth Christmas program will now be on Sunday, December the 12th, in the sanctuary at 1115. Join us and bring all the kids you know for a fun and festive event that will include singing carols, telling stories, and a visit from Santa, Mrs. Claus, and some of Santa's elves. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every Monday every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And now, Reverend Cindy, Sydney, <laughs> I can't talk today will give us our benediction. <laughs> so I just want to say a little bit about next week first that um, a blue service, as this is sometimes called, is a wonderful way to honor loss. And it doesn't have to just be about someone in your life. It can be a pet. It might be a job, a change that's gone on. So you can honor that experience. and perhaps move into the holidays, celebrating the holidays with just a greater sense of love and perhaps without residual grief, residual guilt for trying to feel joy, any of that, but honoring a life. And, you know, it doesn't mean that the grief will go away. It just means that we are going to surround it with more love. And so I do invite you to bring pictures to bring mementos that we can put on the altar. There will be candles, and I will actually have you do a process where you can bring um, the name of the person up and put it with the candles or the loss, whatever it is, you can identify that. And if you're at home, I want you to be able to uh, participate in this as well. So you might want to get a candle for yourself and begin to think about those losses that might have happened. You know, we, gosh, COVID, so many of us were not even able to honor lives in person when we lost people during the last almost two years. And this might be the opportunity to do that. And I promise it won't be a sad, maudlin, depressing evening. You will walk out of here with a sense of uplift and release and intention to go forward. I promise you. Um, oh, and one other thing, today is Reverend Nadine Weathersby's birthday. All right. I said her name wrong, but she knows. Okay, let's, let's, let's go get some pie. So, <laughs> so I just invite everybody to turn within one more time and to recognize, just to recognize, that we indeed have been brought here together in that celebration of the divine so that we each might touch each other's hearts, that we might lift each other up, that we might be able to shift in our awareness of knowing who and what we are, the divine. We are that. And how wonderful to know that we've been able to experience it together. We've been able to share that. And through the music, this beautiful music, we've been able to access parts of our of our subconscious of our loving heart of our Christ light and through everyone who has supported us in this experience we are so grateful we are so grateful for all of it we are grateful for our crew for our digital ministry team we are grateful for our sound crew we are grateful for our practitioners we are grateful for everyone who is a part of this experience we are grateful for those who have been holding vigil at home holding vigil here all of it all of it it has been wonderful. 
And I know that as we move out into the world, we carry this sense of possibility and blessing with us. And so in that, we bless all churches everywhere, all synagogues, ashrams, mosques, all paths to God. We know there are so many ways to reach that mountain because there's so many of us here. So we just simply walk each other home in the knowing that we are love and we are loved. It is wonderful and wondrous. We are grateful I release this word. I know it is so, and together we say, amen. And you can get her music. You have a website. Yes. KarenMitchellMusic.com. That's you, right. Reverend thank Sophie. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so great to be here. And thank, thank you, everybody, for being here today. <laughs> Sing this one more time. Here we go. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest, we rest in God. Thank you, Karen Mitchell.